YouTube. In this video, we're going to be talking about bearded dragon genetics and in particular, the non-recessive genetics. So in this video, we're not going to be talking about hypos, trans, wiblets, zeros, nothing like that. Uh, we're only going to be talking about the non-recessive genetics. I'm going to be doing several videos on genetics. Uh, the next bearded dragon video is actually going to be about the recessive genetics. So if you want to know more about that, subscribe so you don't miss the next video and also hit that notification bell. Also, while you're here, I have some merch on. Kiwi's Tales and Scales t-shirt. looks pretty good. Hasn't faded yet. I've actually had this shirt for about a year. And so far, no fades. So it's pretty good quality. There's a merch link down in the description below. Let's get rolling. First, I want to start off with a couple of normal scale bearded dragons. Here is a normal scale. Pretty spiky. She's actually... Pretty dark this morning, hasn't brightened up yet. She hasn't basked long enough. It happens. So I don't have a normal bearded dragon, but this is the typical look of a normal bearded dragon. They have normal scales. They're lacking in much color. Usually the color will be around the, their eye and face. You gonna figure it out? There she goes, trying to leave. We also have this girl here. She is another normal scale. So the thing about normal scales is that they are relatively spiky. Usually if you have a normal scale, you will know you will rub downwards and there won't be any resistance versus if you rub upwards, there's a lot of resistance. And that is a normal scale bearded dragon. A very nice one. Here we have a leatherback. So the thing about leatherbacks is they are smooth. I mean, that's why they're called leatherbacks. So this girl is smooth. There's no resistance either direction. Minor resistance because they still technically have scales. They aren't scaleless. Uh, so there's little to no resistance either direction. And that is a leatherback. Most of my dragons are leatherbacks. I prefer the leatherback gene. Obviously, I have normal scales because you have to have normal scales if you want to breed. You cannot breed leatherback to leatherback. That creates silkies, which are technically scaleless animals. And they have a lot of requirements. They are very high maintenance. Next, I want to talk about genetic stripes. For the most part, they have this nice stripe going down the back. And it's more prominent when you get a leatherback. And I'll show you the difference between a normal scale genetic stripe and a leatherback genetic stripe. Here is a leatherback genetic stripe. You can see the genetic stripe a little bit better. Sadly, a lot of my dragons are very saturated in color. So there's very little pattern. And they happen to have the stripes the same color as the rest of them. But you can see the stripes pretty good on this leatherback genetic stripe. This next guy here is another leatherback genetic stripe. He also happens to be from a genetic stripe to genetic stripe pairing. So what happens when you breed genetic stripe to genetic stripe, you get thunderbolts and the stripe becomes a super straight stripe. So next we have this dunner. With dunners, you get extreme spiking and you also have this pattern that's almost rounded on their back. So I'll also show you a couple leatherback dunners just so you can see it. But with dunners, you have resistance on both directions because their spikes stick straight up. Now, with dunners, you also have different scale patterns on the beard. So with dunners, the beard has a different pattern as well from compared to a normal. Their pattern has a center point, and that center point spreads in all directions. So from this center point right here, the beard will spread down to the right, to the left, and upwards. Here's what a non-dunner beard looks like. You can see that all the scales go downward. They do not go to the sides. They do not go upwards. Here we have a leatherback dunner. You can kind of see the pattern a little bit better on this leatherback dunner. So it's all around the sides here. It's almost like lines going up and down. And they're also rounded, so they have like a rounded 
looking pattern. And again, the beard has that center point where it spreads in all directions. Here we have another leatherback gunner. This guy also happens to be a genetic stripe. So in this animal, you will see all of the non-recessive genes present. So you have leatherback, you have dunner, and you also have genetic stripe. He doesn't like me touching his, his head. He doesn't like it. There's also a misconception that tiger barring is a genetic. Tiger barring just happens to come from several years of selective breeding. And you just select the ones with the most blue barring and you keep breeding it down the road, you will get high blue bar dragons, also known as tiger stripes. Here's a great example of a blue bar bearded dragon. This one has a lot more blue barring than the last dragon I showed. Again, this is not a genetic. This is just a pattern that is created over several years of selective breeding. There is a lot of dragons out there with a lot more blue barring than this one. This is a great amount of blue barring. More blue barring just takes over the whole dragon. I have seen dragons with blue bar going all the way down the middle of the spine. And I just, I don't prefer it. So here is a nice blue bar bearded dragon. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, 